cataractcoach.com. Senior resident stop and chop at about case 100. If you're still doing divide and conquer, you need to learn this. There's a resident case around case 100 to show you what can be accomplished with some hard work. Video is at two times normal speed. It takes about seven minutes, so the total unedited case time is around 14 minutes. So you can see viscolas going inside the eye now. Very nice fill there. Looks like some markings at uh, the against the room radiant 180. And that's a nice firm eye, good dilation. And let's see the incision technique here, holding the eye through the paracentesis. Here's the keratome, looks like a single plane. No, maybe a, no, maybe a single plane, a little short on the incision, but not so bad, I'll take it. I like the nicking of the limbal vessels, that's very helpful as well. Let's see the rexus technique here, starting off with the cystotome. I'm gonna watch the video for the first time with you, so we're watching this together. And let's get that rexus done, starting that off. That looks a little on the small side to me, but perhaps it'll be enlarged here with these forceps. And nice technique, floating in the incision. Nicely done, very round. And I like how the rexus was expanded from the initial flap, which I thought was on the small side. This looks pretty good. It's a pretty good rexus. I'd make it a little bigger. That's actually pretty good. That's really good for case 100. Very nicely done. Very good, surgeon. All right, let's see what's going on here. Looking, releasing some viscoelastic, it looks like. And then there's the hydrodissection. And let's see, tapping down the nucleus. Let's see it spin a little bit. A little more hydrodissection. Uh, your attending has his cannula or her cannula right in the middle of our view. Can he or she retract that a little bit? <laughs> it's a little bit overbearing. And now you see how the incision does look short, right? So you can see the incision there. It's a little on the short side. It'll seal up fine, I hope. If not, you can put a suture in. Faker probe going in. Looks like a 275 or 28 the purple sleeve. And let's see the technique here. So a uh, groove down the middle. Another groove. Look at the prokinium just staying right there in the center. That's very nicely done. Another groove, another groove. May want to widen that up a little bit now. And oh no, just going for the crack. All right. Put the instruments in there, a ball tip chopper. There's a crack, propagating that all the way through. Very efficiently done. Getting that nucleus to rotate. And now let's see the stop and chop. There was the stop part. Let's see the chop. Pre-placing the chopper there. Around the equator, here's a horizontal chop. Beautiful, nicely done. Now, if you're gonna do this horizontal chop for the first time, yeah, this ball tip type chopper can be very helpful. Many manufacturers make it. You can look around for it, you don't have to ask me. And again, beautifully done, good technique. I like how the eye stays in primary. By the way, the draping is really good. Eyes nice and in good positioned, centered up in the scope. The, the, the video's in focus. Right, we always love to show videos that are in focus. A lot of young doctors send videos in for us to review and they're all out of focus. And anytime it's out of focus, you know what we do? We hit that delete button. Next. You won't watch a blurry video, I promise. And so here we go, taking out the pieces. That was very efficient. Again, we are showing this at 2x speed. So this is not the normal speed that the surgeon is operating at. And now removing this last bit of nucleus here. And that goes down pretty easy. Beautifully done. That was very efficient. If you're in practice and you've done 500 cases, I think this is an excellent level. If you've done 100 and you're this good, I'm really impressed. Keep up the good work. Don't take this as too much of a compliment. Take it as a, as a, a drive and determination to do even better and better. This new generation of these uh, kids who grew up playing video games, there's some incredible hand-eye coordination out there. Really, uh, really, I'm impressed. And so now cleaning up the capsular bag here. And for case 100, you don't have to do too much polishing. Oh, that's pretty good. Clean that up. Under serves the anterior capsule being vacuumed off a bit there. Very nicely done. Wow, this is quite impressive. Now, if you're not at this level of case 100, that's okay. Don't be worried here. You don't have to compete with this person. Compete with yourself. But this is a good place. If you can get to this level by the end of your residency... That's a solid foundation. That's a solid footing. If you can get to this level by case 100, even better. Now it looks like what's going on here, drying this off. Was it going to be a torque lens? Here comes a Mendez gauge or something similar. And let's see, putting that there. They're lining it up with the 180. And now it looks like, okay, going to place some marks here. This looks like patient has some with the rule of stigmatism, perhaps going to get a torque lens. 
And so that's very nicely done. Again, in this case, you want to be careful with that, that incision you made, which is a little on the short side. It may cause a little more astigmatic flattening than you're expecting. I suppose at this point, the young doctor is loading up the lens for herself or himself. And I'm going to place that inside the eye. Here we go. Let's see what we got. But beautifully done case. Again, my only criticism of this case so far is basically I didn't like the incision that much. And you can see here it's a little bit of a tight fit. I'm not sure why that is. It was a 275 keratome. There it is. You don't need to have the injector that far, tip that far inside the eye. Delivering the lens there. Here it comes. All righty. I did like the Rex. I thought that was pretty good. I certainly like the Nucus Division technique. The stop and chop was beautifully done. Look at the Rex's overlap of the optics. Fantastic. It was about a five-ish millimeter Rex's. That looks beautiful. Getting that lens in position. Now, I usually place the lens a little bit before the actual marks, kind of like this. Then remove viscoelastic. Important editorial lens, please go behind the optic and remove viscoelastic. You don't want to leave a viscoelastic behind the optic because that viscoelastic between the optic posterior surface and the posterior capsule can cause some lubrication and cause this lens to slip out of position. So please, can you go behind it and remove viscoelastic? Let's see. Are you going to go behind the optic? If you don't... I can forgive it for case 100, but that make, put that on your to-do list. That's what you got to do to improve your game here. You can't leave it like this with this. No, you got it. Next time, you got to move that viscoelastic. So good learning case here. I'm impressed with what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Be your own toughest critic. Make a better incision next time. And yes, if you put a torque lens in, you have to go behind the optic to remove the viscoelastic. You know you got to. Otherwise, you're going to have a higher rate of uh, lenses rotating out of position because of that lubrication effect. All right, keep up the good work. Thanks for watching.